Well, I think we can say now in retrospect that 2023 wasn't much to write home about. It was a 12-month period so dull and unimpressive that Taylor Swift won Person of the Year by default. But as we tracked and discussed throughout the year, for a company like Disney, 2023 was something beyond nearly unimpressive. It was downright catastrophic. In fact, Disney's self-immolation was, for the rest of us, one of the year's only major bright spots. If nothing else, at least we all got to watch Disney lose a bunch of money. And uh, so the year was not a total waste in hindsight. The New York Post details uh, this week just how bad things got for the once great movie studio. Reading, quote, 2023 marked Disney's 100th anniversary of making movie magic. It also marked a disastrous year at the box office. Out of eight major theatrical releases from Disney this year, seven of them significantly underperformed with audiences not just in the U.S., but overseas as well. The first was in February with Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Despite an all-star cast, including Paul Rudd, Michael Douglas, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Bill Murray, the $200 million million priced film earned only $250 million domestically and $476 million worldwide, far short of the $600 million it needed to break even on its theatrical run. Now, presumably, uh, $600 million represents its production and marketing budget, Because Disney spent well over half a billion dollars making and promoting a film about a man in an ant costume who runs around punching bad guys. And as I understand it, communicating with ants. From what I'm told, that's one of the superpowers of this superhero is that he can communicate with ants, which how does that even help you when you're fighting bad guys? It's like a very specific kind of bad guy that you would need that that would help you with? I mean, like a bad guy who's the size of an ant? And in that case, you, why do you need to communicate with it? You just step on him. So I don't know. But it, you know, in fact, um, this film actually was a sequel. So in total, Disney has spent over a billion dollars on the guy in the ant costume franchise. They could have provided food for like 50 African villages for a thousand years, but instead they spent the money on Ant-Man. Now, I'm not one to complain about inequities, okay, but uh, this is a bit much. And that was only the first of their flops. As the Post highlights, another superhero movie, The Marvels, had a $274 million budget, but still hasn't cracked $100 million at the box office, and the flops continued from there. Quote, uh, moviegoers showed signs of being tired of recycled material from Hollywood. Disney had a lot riding on its live-action remake of The Little Mermaid, starring Halle Bailey, released in May. It earned a respectable $297 million domestically, but greatly fell below expectations internationally, earning just $267 million overseas. The film had a $250 million budget. The next month, Disney released Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, starring 81-year-old Harrison Ford. It grossed just $174 million domestically, less than $400 million worldwide, making it impossible for the studio to recoup its budget of nearly $300 million, which does not include marketing costs. Disney closed out the summer with its reboot of Haunted Mansion, making a dismal $68 million domestically and $117 million worldwide. The $150 million budgeted remake starring Rosario Dawson, Owen Wilson, Danny DeVito, Tiffany Haddish, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Jared Leto. Disney's 2003 predecessor starring Eddie Murphy, which was also considered a major disappointment, still grossed $182 million worldwide with a $90 million budget. So in case you missed that, uh, just to uh, review, they spent... $150 $150 million remaking a movie from 2003 that was a flop the first time around. It, no one wanted to see it the first time, and then they did it again. And no one wanted to see it the second time. So, of course, we have to try a third time. Maybe it's, I mean, if, if Haunted Mansion didn't work out and the remake of Haunted Mansion didn't work out, well, then I've got an idea. The remake of the remake of The Haunted Mansion, that's what's going to get butts in the seats. So they're just layering flops on top of flops, dud after dud. And then they remake the dud, and that's a dud too. And it's not hard to see why Disney is failing so consistently. You don't don't need to consult any marketing analysts or PR gurus. Just ask any average moviegoer, and they will tell you. I mean, literally walk up to anybody on the street. And to ask them how they feel about Disney right now, and when they tell you they don't really, that they don't like Disney, ask them why. And there'll be two reasons. 
They'll give you two reasons why people aren't watching Disney movies. The first is that the films are almost always rehashed, stale, overdone, played out. They aren't producing anything original or interesting. I mean, Disney films are so unoriginal and derivative that you would think the scripts are being written by Claudine Gay, which in fact, they sort of are, or by people like her. Which brings us to the second reason, that audiences, of course, are tired of the left-wing propaganda in these films. Disney movies, just like the movies from any other big studio, are preachy and derivative. You know, and, and that's it. That's the problem. That's what almost any moviegoer, no matter how they identify politically, will tell you. And that means that the solution for Disney, as we mentioned at the top, is pretty simple. Just make movies that are original, or at least somewhat original, and also not political. Another way of putting it, focus on telling stories again. Just tell Disney for so many years was it was a it was a storytelling company. They told stories, and get back to that. That's all you have to do. But that does not appear to be in the plans for Disney in 2024. Instead, they're going to double down on everything that audiences hate. And that's why the company announced a few days ago that they will be producing a new Star Wars movie this year. So, you know, we're, we're going, we're rehashing again. We're going back to the Star Wars. Well, and it will be directed by a feminist journalist. So they are giving the Star Wars franchise, not just to a feminist, but to a feminist journalist. The Independent reports, Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy, who is set to become the first woman and the first person of color to direct a Star Wars feature film, has said it's about time. The 45-year-old Pakistani-Canadian filmmaker made her name as an Oscar-winning documentarian before going on to direct two episodes of the Marvel series, Miss Marvel. Her Star Wars movie, which has been written by Peaky Blinders creator Stephen Knight, and is rumored to be titled either Star Wars A New Beginning or Star Wars New Jedi Order, is set to begin filming this year. Quote, I'm very thrilled about the project because I feel what we're about to create is something very special, Obey Obeyed Chinoy told CNN during their coverage of New Year's celebrations around the world. We're in 2024 now. And it's about time that we had a woman come forward to shape a story in a galaxy far, far away. Yes, it's about time. It's about time that a woman shapes a Star Wars story. Now, of course, every Star Wars film and TV show for the last decade has already been shaped by a woman. Kathleen Kennedy is the president of Lucasfilm. And the last Star Wars trilogy was about a woman. It was about a female superhuman Jedi person. But even so, this is an historic moment because they're adding yet another woman. And, and this woman is the most feminist of them all. And just to show you that, here she is uh, a few years ago, um, before she was selected for, for, to be in the Star Wars franchise. Here she is explaining what her goal is when she makes a film. And you might, you might if you don't know any better, you might think, oh, you, her goal when she makes a film, it must be to tell a great story that people want to see. Oh, no, it's not that. Uh, here it is, watch. What is the balance of activating a force for change, but also trying to permeate that patriarchy, that power structure? And is that a part of the calculation of your art as well? And, and what's been the reaction to that? Oh, absolutely. Um, I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. <laughs> not you, just, just not, you not, know, you. Not, not you. Point taken, point taken. <laughs> but, um, you know, it is important to be able to look into the eyes of a man and say, I am here and recognize that and recognize that I am working to bring something that makes you uncomfortable, and it should make you uncomfortable, because you need to change your attitude. And it's only when you're uncomfortable, when you're shifty, when you have to have difficult conversations, that you will perhaps look at yourself in the mirror and not like the reflection, and then say, maybe there is something wrong with the way I think, or maybe there is something wrong with the way I am addressing this issue. There's your next Star Wars director. Now, I mean, needless to say, if a man ever openly confessed that he enjoyed making women uncomfortable, he would be fired from whatever job he has 
probably like sent to jail. He certainly wouldn't be hired to make the next Star Wars film, nor should he, because by the way, um, enjoying making people uncomfortable is that's not a that's not a normal thing for a human being. That's not that's not healthy. You should not enjoy. Now there are times when it's necessary to cause discomfort in other people, but you, you should not enjoy other people's discomfort. Okay, that makes you a, that's the definition of being like a sadist. That's the definition of sadistic. Now, all that to say, it's like no one, is, we're not uncomfortable. Okay, nothing that you can say is making, when you talk about the patriarchy and men hear it, it's, we're not, oh man, this is uncomfortable. This is really, I, I feel like she's, we're not uncomfortable. Um, we're bored. So that's the effect that you have on on men. Is you you can make us bored and like irritated, and we find you tedious and dull, and we don't want to be around you. But it's not discomfort is not really the word I would use. Whatever word you use, though, this is the kind of contempt that Disney has for its audience. That, that even after a year of failure brought on by politicized and unoriginal films, they are now gearing up to make what is sure to be their most politicized and also most unoriginal film to date. It's become kind of a war of attrition with the audience. And they assume that you'll eventually come back and you'll start giving them your money again, especially if it's Star Wars, because it's Star Wars and you'll just sort of dutifully show, even if you know the movie's going to suck, You'll show up anyway and give me your money because it's Star Wars and this is what I do. That's what they're assuming. But now you need to prove them wrong and make this the year that Disney is, once and for all, finally canceled. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Walsh Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.